cherry tree, so that maple leaf is offensive to me. They're just going to laugh at me and probably beat me up in the parking lot. And speaking of something that got beat up, the uh, nanny state in New York. Nanny state suffers a blow. Court overturns the soda ban. The New York Court of Appeals, the highest court in the state, has overturned a ban on the sale of large soda imposed at the behest of Michael Bloomberg in 2012, who said that the law was a response to childhood obesity. So you have all these uh, nanny figures, whether it's Michael Bloomberg, whether it's Michelle Obama, and they're trying to tell your kids what to eat. And I'll be the first to say there is an epidemic of childhood obesity, but I don't think you solve the problem by just making laws saying that you can't have a drink exercise, you can't eat Cheetos at lunch, or whatever the, the situation may be. It's up to the parents. The parents, you guys got to make the right decisions. Stop taking your kids to all these fast food, junky restaurants. Give them some real food. Take the time. Sit down with your kids and you can end the problems there. TSA raises groping fees charged to passengers. Yeah, you didn't know that you're actually paying these people to touch you. So uh, isn't, that, isn't that not prostitution? That's state-sponsored, mandatory prostitution when you go to the airport. That's what it is. Fees are currently $250 for a nonstop flight or $5 for a trip with a layover. But the next month's increase that Congress approved back in December the new fees will be $560 for a nonstop flight and an extra $560 for each leg of the trip when flights are over four hours apart. So, yeah, state-sponsored mandatory prostitution when you go to the airport. You say, oh, you're being extreme. There's nothing wrong with these people touching you and all this stuff. Oh, really? We've shown you the montages all the time, how they touch the kids. Uh, they were touching on Mini-Me last week. All kinds of weird shenanigans going on with the TSA, and not to mention, they have not caught a single terrorist. And you say, hold on, I'm remembering, I'm remembering something. Didn't they catch the underwear bomber? No, they did not catch the underwear bomber. The people on that plane stopped the underwear bomber, not the TSA. All right, so this would be the equivalent of saying you caught, uh, you know, the mass murderer. I caught the mass murderer when he came to my house to kill me. Or the police say that, that we caught the mass murder. I was like, no, nah, man, the dude kicked in my door and I beat him up or I shot him or my dog bit him. And then I held him here until you got here. I caught the mass murderer, not you. TSA has not stopped a single terrorist. But the security theater, the, secu the security shenanigans continue to go on with this organization. And they just need to get out of our lives altogether. And somebody said he had to get this out of his life. So he did the only thing he could think to do. Video, Google conference interrupted by killer robot protest. And at the beginning, <laughs> all right. At the beginning of each, at the beginning of each application, is a developer who wants to get their idea out to the market as quickly as possible, uh, no matter what it is. So whether it's this or situations like the guy at the Super Bowl, just show up and make your voice heard. Now we'll end tonight with a top report on the DrudgeReport.com. Abandoned Walmart considered as feds explore immigrant shelter options. Scrambling to secure accommodations for the overwhelming surge of Central American miners crossing into the United States illegally, the federal government is looking at several sites in New York as potential shelters, including a rundown former Walmart building. So does this not speak to you that in the United States of America, in a place like New York, they have to consider putting illegal immigrants in a Walmart facility because there are just so many, because it wasn't enough for them to be held at the Border Patrol facilities. Those are filled up. Now they are providing people with travel accommodations to go deeper into the United States. We broke that last week in McAllen, Texas. It's not enough that they're in the ICE facilities being released because they don't have enough bed space. It's not enough that they're at the military facilities being housed there at places like San Antonio. Now. It's so far stretched and so far wide that even in the state of New York, they have to come up with shelter accommodations for illegal immigrants. And this is a true crisis. And I don't mean illegal immigration crisis. I mean people just being bussed in here to pretty much uh, destabilize the country. And you say, what do you mean these people are coming here to destabilize the country? Well, it's hard enough to sustain the welfare system as it is. So you have people who are going to come here, and even if they have the best intentions to work, it may be a little difficult for them to get a job if they don't speak the native tongue. So you have a, a lot of single mothers, a lot of children who are going to need assistance. So it seems to me that these people may be getting uh, some type of financial assistance, not to mention that the Border Patrol 
is busing people in, giving them travel accommodations, even though these people are supposed to appear in court. So let me give you this example. I live in the city of Austin, Texas. If I get arrested by the Austin Police Department for any offense, once I'm released or, you know, I pay my fine or my fee or whatever, I don't get a bus ticket home and I just live across town. So they're bringing people in who are not even from this country, giving them travel vouchers to go deeper into the United States. So if you got busted on the Texas-Mexico border and you now live in Chicago because Border Patrol paid for it, do you really think that those people are going to go all the way back to Texas to appear for their court date? Of course not, and they know this as well. This is America destroyed by design, and this is just one more way that they're doing it. But if you want to support America, one more way that you can do it is support the Info War. You can go to InfoWars.com and also PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, and so much more at PrisonPlanet.tv. Stay tuned because after this break, we'll have a special report from Rom Du as well as Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. They're on the ground in El Paso documenting the illegal immigration influx. And also from the vault, Alex Jones detailing biometrics way back in the 90s. This is something that you do not want to miss. This is stuff he prophesied way back then. I guess you can't say it's really prophecy when people write these white papers bragging about this stuff. But for the people who are awake enough to seek out this information and present it to you, uh, this seems very prophetic. So stay tuned for this right after the break. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate, and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. Over the past few weeks, InfoWars has been documenting the illegal immigration influx coming into the United States. This week, our crew is in El Paso, Texas, where Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs and Rob Dew had a chance to sit down with the VP of the Border Patrol Union. This is an exclusive interview that you'll find only here, premiering now on the InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, my name is Stu Harris. I'm First Vice President with Local 1929 of the National Border Patrol Council. Right now, the biggest concern, obviously, is, is this Central American invasion that, that's happening right now, uh, and not just the humanitarian aspect of it, because what we know is that the cartels control the smuggling routes, and it's the cartels that are pushing these people from Central America across the river, instead of taking them to a port of entry, where if they turn themselves into a port of entry, the end result is going to be the same. So it's the cartels pushing these groups across the river to tie up our agents, and meanwhile, our agents are, are tied up processing, you know, feeding these, these people, changing diapers. 
uh, and the drug cartels are, are running whatever, whoever they want across the border and other places. And who or what is coming in, we don't know. And we won't know until something bad happens. And that right now is the biggest, the biggest concern that we have. And this, this has to be addressed. We want to make sure they're not carrying any infectious diseases or, or contagious uh, diseases uh, so our agent, agents aren't put in harm's way unnecessarily. Um, once that's done, obviously, you know, medical evaluation if they need it, if they're asking for any kind of medical assistance, uh, we'll provide what we can there. Um, and then they're taken to a, a processing center where they either wait to be processed or they're sent to uh, El Paso or Tucson, uh, and they're, they're run through the system, fingerprints, the whole nine yards. Uh, they're issued a packet. They're given a notice to appear before a judge, and they're released. You know, a, a lot of what we're hearing in, in the media and, and other places is that, uh, you know, the conditions in Central America, economic, are, they're just horrible conditions. There's violence. There's gang violence. And that's true. And, and you know, that, that's a, a, a terrible, terrible way to have to live. But that's been going on for more than 10 years, okay? So for this invasion to start suddenly happening, something else had to change. And what changed was the fact that we were engaging in this catch and release program. And word spreads fast. And our, our agents are, are interviewing these people when they're being processed. And one of the things they ask them, so why come now? Uh, and the answer is 90% of the time, because you're going to give me a permiso or a, a permit. They know they're going to be processed and released. And they're free to go wherever they want to go in the United States. And the likelihood of them ever showing up is, you know, for their court date, slim to none. And you know, even if they did show up for their court date, uh, what we're going to start seeing is what we call the anchor babies. Okay, because these court dates are being set, from what I understand, so far down the road, these people are going to come here, they're going to settle in, some of them are going to have children, those children are now United States citizen. How is the judge going to deport these people if they have a United States uh, citizen as a child? He's not even if they did show up. So that's a problem. I don't have an exact number on it. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say probably about 90% of these people, once they're here, they're here. And, and they're not going to go before an Im immigration judge knowing that they could be facing de deportation. Uh, we're, at, we're absolutely against amnesty. You know, it, it's, amnesty has been touted as, you know, we need to bring these people out of the shadows. And well, that's all well and good. Um, but we shouldn't be let, letting them go into the shadows in the first place like we're doing right now. So uh, abs amnesty is not the answer. Well, it, it is a huge burden. Um, and I'm sure you, you know DHS has, has been rated one of the, the worst places to work in the federal government. And that's because of the morale issue. Now you pile a situation like this on top, you know, our agents are looking for jobs elsewhere. You know, some are ready to leave for, go back to their hometown, their, work for their local police department. So it's, it's a huge burden. Uh, morale is, is the worst that it's ever been by far. And again, this situation has to be addressed. I know of at least one from our sector that, that transferred to another job. And I know more of our agents are, are looking. Right now, um, in places other than the Rio Grande Valley sector, uh, our agents are being pulled off the line in less than their 10-hour shifts because of the, the budget concerns. And so it's, it's exposing some areas. But we're starting to see what's happening in, in the Rio Grande Valley sector, we're starting to see that here. We've had upper, upwards of 70 people from Central America just turn themselves into the agents here. So it's, this is a Southwest border problem and it's also a problem for the United States because these people are going throughout the United States. It's hard to say. I mean, so you said it's, it's averaging about 100, 150 a day almost? Yeah, about, about 100, 150 a day. That's, that's about the best number I could, I could put on it. You know, if it's, if they do the right thing and, and start detaining these people and not catch and release like they are now, um, the, the, the problem as far as the Central, America, or Central American invasion that, that's going on right now will stop, as we've seen it in the past. We've seen it, I think it was in 2004, we had a lot of people from Brazil that were coming in. Not at this magnitude, but that's what was happening here. And when we started detaining those people, it stopped. Uh, as far as how many people are, are getting biased that we don't know about, I just don't know how you can put a number on something that you don't see or something that you can't physically count.
The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen men.